So if you recall, the beginning of the semester, I showed you this image and talked about John Baldessari. And I said that remembering this would come in handy. And now it's time to explain. So the piece by John Baldessari about sharpening a pencil has something to do with art. Uh, it can be a pretty big open debate. So what does sharpening a pencil have to do with the art world? So as we left off from the last lecture, everything kind of fell apart with the minimalists. You had basically everything being sucked out of art. Art was just this lifeless object. And then the whole uh, murder trial with Carl Andre. So it l literally was for a lot of people party over. Uh, pack your bags, time to go home, all of that. However, John Baldessari teaching at Cal Arts, he was he's much more along the lines of some of the conceptual art that we looked at. So he was teaching all these young new artists what was possible. So it was like worlds away from what was happening in New York where everything was falling apart. So Cal Arts you know, in California, everything was being reinvented. So essentially, these new young artists were basically is like, well, fine, if we can no longer make art, if we can no longer make any new images, we will start simply recycling images. So that's when we get into the postmodern world and the appropriated image. So Sherry Levine's first big show after Walker Evans where she presented photographs she took of Walker Evans photographs. So the appropriation, borrowing and recycling existing images. So now we're entering in the postmodern uh, it's really postmodern came about with architecture in the late 70s. Uh, and it carried, you know, like everything else, it carries over into the rest of the arts. Uh, so kind of an interesting thing that starts to happen in the late 70s is there are uh, guys playing around with music and they are basically appropriating music and making new music from other music. So while you have these visual artists recycling images like Sherry Levine, you basically have the rise of hip hop. So, and it was all based on borrowing and recycling other music. So it's just kind of an interesting thing that that would be hap happening in the, you know, in the same city uh, you know, up in New York. Uh, so other examples, David Sawley, where he often would take two completely different styles of art and sort of merge them together for like one single piece. Uh, so we have this, you know, minimal next to a very figurative type image. And then also you get pluralism, multiple directions. No longer is there any dominant type of style of art. Uh, what does sort of happen uh, in the 90s and into the aughts, uh, is, I mean, there, there becomes kind of more popular groups of artists. And we'll get that to a little bit. Uh, but the idea of pluralism is all these multiple directions that artists are taking. So you don't, you know, there, there's no more dominant style like 
there was with uh, you know the abstract expressionists and pop art. So I like showing Gerhard Richter just because you know all the multiple styles and stuff that he works in. So the one on the left is he did a painting of his daughter. Wait, I'm, I'm trying to think of all the different because it, it's crazy. You know, he took a photo of his daughter, then did a painting from the photograph and then photographed the painting as the final piece. So an appropriation of an appropriation. I know it's kind of crazy. If you look under redundancy and Webster's, you'll find Gerhard Richter's painting here. Uh, and the other image where it's uh, I refer to as process painting because it, it becomes more about this uh, process to create the image. Uh, whereas he basically just builds up several layers of paint and then takes like gigantic shrink wrap uh, or saran wrap. <coughs> excuse me, saran wrap material, you know, lays that over the, the the painting while it's still wet and pulls like this giant squeegee across it. And you get all these crazy blending and, you know, some layers are a little more dry than others and they're tearing and ripping. So if you ever see one of these, you know, Gerhard Richter's in person, you see just like all these multiple levels, layers of colors and things like that. So like I said, it's just sort of this example of the, you know, all the different styles that are going on. Uh, some of the other things coming out of Germany with Anselm Kiefer. And a lot of his work sort of deals with the guilt and trauma of uh, Germany because of World War II. Uh, even to this day, it's not a real popular uh, conversation to have. Uh, so they they they're still kind of not too happy with it. So and some Kiefer is just kind of reminding uh, Germany, you know, what what a bad idea world domination is. Uh, and. And Keith Haring uh, with graffiti or street art, which is kind of interesting because we have Keith Haring and we'll see in a second John Michael Basquiat. And so Keith Haring kind of got his start by running around uh, the subway station and it, whenever they would take like one of the billboard poster signs down uh, in New York. You know, they would put up this sort of protective paper so no one would do anything to the actual kind of like cement wall. Uh, so he would do these drawings all over uh, the subway and, you know, slow, slowly got some recognition, started getting notoriety, you know, things uh, moved on to bigger, better things. And Basquiat, kind of the same thing, this uh, graffiti street artist. So the two of these uh, artists, yeah, you, you kind of can pinpoint the two of them of giving this rise to street art. So taking the art out of the street and putting it into the high arts. They're putting it in the galleries, you know, now it's in museums and things like that. And so it's kind of interesting. So this is sort of the, the birthplace in a way uh, going full circle where now you have people like Swoon and Shepherd Fairy that uh, are putting you know the high arts back into the streets so it's kind of a you know an interesting uh, cycle that has been created and Jenny Holzer getting into word works where she abandoned image making and just uses uh, text. So the text is the, uh, that's the piece. Um, and so here's this, you know, installation of a 
show she had at the Guggenheim Museum. So she had these LED uh, text screens, uh, you know, going around up the building and then on the benches would have uh, text as well. Um, so like I said, it's, you know, getting rid of uh, the whole idea of having to use an image and just using this text. You know, there's a lot of, a lot that could be discussed about uh, the use of text and what text can do. And Kara Walker, we've talked about her work before a few times, you know, uh, with issues in identity. Um, pretty much all of us uh, either have or will at some point, you know, who am I? What, a, what is my history? Where am I from? What is my ancestry and all of that? Uh, so you know, just to refresh, you know, Kara Walker, uh, primarily working with uh, 19th century, uh, I guess, ideas of uh, basically, you know, African Americans and their sort of uh, unfortunate livelihood in, uh, in slavery. Uh, so I always like to sort of compare her and, uh, and some Kiefer, uh, you know, Kiefer being sort of this uh, little reminder, you know, what a bad idea that the Third Reich and all of that was, uh, everything that it, the, the Nazi party and all of that, you know, the uh, unfortunate events from that, you know, and Carol Walker, the unfortunate events of, you know, our country's own history and so they're like I said, they 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 kind of relate to each other in that they're both looking at the past, you know, as sort of a reminder of who we are and what we have done. Um, and it's not always a pretty thing. Like I said, you know, early on, art's not always going to be pretty. It's not always going to be. Uh, make you laugh or smile, you know, it can just be gut-wrenching, so. And then uh, getting into performance art and installation art. Uh, so Laurie Anderson, where if you look up Laurie Anderson, you'll find like a lot of music videos and stuff. That's just because she is a composer. Uh, so she'll compose her own music and then she'll do some type of crazy dance or something as you can see she's holding like the little uh kind of flashlights they would use for directing airplanes and stuff and then you know she also will put together uh videos uh, that would be projected so it, it really becomes this sort of uh mul multimedia uh event uh, so the difference between like, you know, performance art and Alan Capra's happenings, you know, Alan Capra's happenings were just meant for one time. You know, so if you, you missed the courtyard, then you missed it completely. Uh, performance art often is meant to be repeated more than once. Uh, and then the Kai Kwok go, uh, excuse me. Kagawan Quinn, I hope I got that right. Uh, his piece, Dream, you know, creating an installation. The artist is trying to create this environment for you to be in. So we've looked at a few other installation pieces before. Uh, the dinner party that we just looked at, uh, Judy Chicago piece, you know, that's considered an installation. Uh, the Kara Walker drawing was in this, you know, completely round room. So basically this drawing is the installation. Uh, so, you know, installation can kind of run the whole gamut of medias. But again, like I said, it's, they're, they're creating this environment for you to be in. 
uh, the digital realm. Uh, so if you want to make note of maryflanagan.com uh, slash collection, it'd be interesting to see if it still really works. Uh, but basically, you know, artists setting up websites as the piece. You know, any type of new technology that comes along, artists are going to start playing around and messing with it. Uh, so, you know, we've talked uh, a little bit about that type of stuff Uh and other uh, the other studio disciplines so just you know the artists using the internet and creating websites as uh, as the piece uh, so like I said it would be kind of interesting to go and visit maryflanagan.com uh, forward slash collection just to see if it still works you know because it was created back in 2001 it might not even run anymore. Who knows? Uh, and then being human, this idea of, you know, who are we? Uh, so Bill Viola, this, you know, multi, uh, you kind of see the, the upper, upper image there where it's like these, you know, five different images of, uh, you know, his video projections and the thing with Bill Viola is like you you know walk in there one screen starts doing something then another screen is kind of some of them will go in sort of the sequence and so it just next thing you know you're surrounded by all these different videos and they have all this sort of shared dialogue and visual imagery back and forth uh, and so you know five angels for the millennium you know back when there was the whole freak out with Y2K and uh, the world was going to end. You weren't supposed to go get gas because the gas pump was going to come alive and kill you and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but at the same time, uh, there was sort of this big turn to uh, just sort of religion in general. Um, so Bill Viola kind of playing with that sort of idea of these, you know, the... the the you know, angels of this new millennium that we're coming into. Uh, and then Lu Louise Bourgeois piece, uh, basically, you know, she has all these different articles of clothing that she wore throughout her life. Uh, so in a way, it's, you know, autobiographical or it's you know, sort of a self-portrait, you know. Uh, a fun thing in my drawing class is I talk about, you know, do a self-portrait, but don't draw yourself. Because technically a self-portrait doesn't always have to look like you. So the Louise Bourgeois, in a way, is a self-portrait, um, but through her clothes. So it's kind of this different spin on it. Uh, and then so globalization, you know, looking at uh, all all the stuff that's going on. So as I was saying, you know, getting into the 90s, into the aughts, into the teens, instead of focusing just on sort of uh, one area, it's, you know, opening up, looking what else is going on. Uh, you know, same time, I was trying to start to weave into you know sort of standard western art history but also some of the non-western art history stuff as well uh, like looking at uh the the works of from the islamic cultures and the uh, asian cultures uh, really like you know everything starts to influence everything else there you know that so being more aware of what's going on so as far as an art history point that's one of the things that starts to happen we start to look more and more at all these other cultures and starts to see all these influence that they have on each other as well as you know looking at work uh you know by female artists you know female artists when i first took art history were not well there it was like they were just starting to be introduced into the the idea of art history so you know art history is a sort of changing thing and finally in the you know 80s and 
late 80s and 90s, it starts to open up to look at everything that's going on across the world, not just this microscope focusing just on the art in New York. So it's looking at everything all over the world. Um, <clears throat> so the Yinka Shinobari, uh, we get into colonialism. Uh, so one of the uh, colonies of England, you know, in Africa, where there was sort of this exchange of uh, images and ideas. Uh, and so it's sort of this play on a, a typical Victorian type room, but with these, you know, traditional African designs. Which was, you know, sort of one of the things that happened was that, uh, unfortunately, the English would see the stuff coming from their African colonies as sort of a novelty gimmicky thing. Um, and so here we have uh, doing the exact opposite, you know, making the, the African aspect of it much more prominent and important in sort of the uh, the English aspect, making it a little more gimmicky. And then uh, Emily Jakar, where we came from. Uh, so she was born uh, in, you know, Bethlehem. It grew up in Saudi Arabia, went to high school in Italy, studied in the U.S., so, so all kinds of uh, different things going on with her as far as her, uh, her upbringing. Um, you know, at the same time being a Christian and, you know, predominantly uh, Jewish and Islamic uh, area areas should say uh, so it's it's you know looking at uh, who she is you know looking at uh, her past her ancestry um, so you know kind of like the uh, Louise Bourgeois in a way this you know just new and different way to look at yourself And then the, the Gupta piece, Very Hungry God, you know, it deals with uh, kind of a, I don't know, an interesting spin where, uh, it, you know, it deals with sort of the hunger issues around the world. So this was built for a, or sculpted for a event in uh, Paris. And so the piece itself is made out, out of these kind of like little, uh, soup or stew buckets that uh, are used by different sort of uh, charity organizations and stuff to you know feed world's population um, so in a way also part of it is sort of uh, you know coming from india the the roots of hinduism you know and bringing food to offer uh, as part of you know their ceremonies And then Yang Fu Dog, you know, Seven Intellectuals of Bamboo Forest. Um, so, you know, with China, uh, there's been a lot of interest in China because they're starting to sort of figure out who they are in a way. Um, for a long, long period of time with, you know, communism in China, uh, I guess they, they didn't look at themselves as much. So you know, now they're, I guess, starting to look at themselves more and, you know, learning a lot more about themselves. Uh, you know, the, the little brief stint talked about China is, you know, within the past 20 years or so, the the history of China and, you know, the art from China is like just 
being completely rewritten. So you have, you know, the, these younger artists that are starting to kind of go along with that. This whole, you know, reinventing themselves and trying to figure out who they are and you know, where where did they fit in the, the bigger scheme. And then here we have uh, Takashi Murakami. Uh, so if you're you know familiar with uh, the Japanese animation, the anime, and it's kind of the uh, the pop culture of uh, coming from Japan. Uh, so Murakami is kind of playing with. Uh, with those ideas and again you know sort of looking back at Japanese uh, history and culture um, and a lot how it has sort of changed after uh, World War II um, that you know Japan went you know massive almost sort of culture shock that they went through Gabriel Orizoko, uh, basically using uh, found materials for his work. So here we have this kind of a uh, crazy chess games that uh, it's all knights that are being used. So there's like no real rules to the game, and it's almost like there's no goal to the game um, and it, it's sort of also the you know viewer kind of gets to figure things out for themselves but it's sort of hard to figure things out when you don't know so um, and then Ernesto Ernesto Neto Using these uh, crazy biomorphic looking bags. Uh, basically, it's like these plastic uh, sacks uh, or nylon sacks that are you know, weighted down with uh, sand and plastic beads. Uh, so getting into the, the idea of you know gravity and um, sort of the the pull towards earth but yet it's these you know weird sort of organic things so you know, really a lot to sort of take in and look at and then uh, Olafar Ellison uh, you know, using color basically uh, so creating these rooms uh, that uh, you know kind of like an installation um, except for it's like the you know using color as the uh, the main thing so you know like we you know brief talked about the color theory and all of that um, you know light and color as an element and so this is uh you know getting into sort of you know new technology uh type piece um when i was talking about how uh the elements are always being added to it's because you know works like this where it's you know just sort of the this sort of you know tr transcending type piece that that's going on and then that is it. So that is all for the semester on the lectures. Hope you had fun.